Hey guys, it's Rob. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. So this is this this is going to be a different type of video than what I've been doing. Uh, it's we're coming off of a very difficult week in the comic industry. Uh, if you haven't kept in the know with that whole thing, then frankly, I'm a little jealous if you don't know what's going on. Uh, the short version of it has been that uh, one of our guys, uh, one of our our creators, um, basically fell on the outs with the online crowd, did some things he shouldn't have done, and ended up taking his own life, which is pretty horrific. It's something that I can't even, it doesn't even feel real, frankly, that it happened. It happened on April Fool's Day of all days. And I think we were all hoping that it was just a joke, but it ended up not being a joke at all. Um, so I've been thinking about whether or not I should comment on this thing. Uh, I don't, I didn't know uh, the artist personally. Uh, I was a fan of his work. Uh, but I think I've been sitting here for the last week debating whether or not I should say something. And I've decided that I think it is something I need to speak a little bit about because I think it highlights something that has been, frankly, on my mind for quite a while. And that is social media. And I, I feel like I've watched the comic community morph over time. Or maybe it's maybe it hasn't morphed. Maybe it's just um, maybe things have just kind of bubbled up from beneath the surface. But what I've seen happen has been really gross and kind of toxic online community that I just don't really I can't relate to to be to be honest with you. I have a lot of friends in the industry that I really respect, but I think that there's something about the social media environment that brings out something in us that I can't, that I don't really think is helpful or healthy or edifying in any kind of way. And I don't even really blame a lot of the people involved in it. Some of the more toxic folks involved in it, I don't even really blame them. I kind of blame the platforms. Uh, I think I blame these type of social engineers who work behind the scenes who have created a system that basically leverages our worst instincts and our worst personality flaws and it monetizes it. And it, it's, it's a really gross and devastating thing that I, I've pulled back from a good bit. If you follow me at all, you know, I'm barely on social media. Um, I'm basically at this point only on Instagram occasionally and on Facebook sparingly. But I, I quit Twitter years ago because it just it, it sunk into a crazy cesspool that I didn't see anything good in anymore. And I've been in social media since its beginning. I've been in the industry for a long time. I've watched how social media has changed things, and I'm disturbed. So that's what today is going to be about. It'll be a different episode. I'm not going to do a process thing. I feel like this is such an important thing for all of us, but especially for the next generation of creator, because I feel like social media is possibly the greatest opportunity or the greatest trap that we're ever going to face in this, in, in our careers. Um, it, it's something I've fallen into pers personally, and that's why, frankly, I've always known I was going to talk about this on this channel, but I've been holding off on it because I, I it's something I'm actually very emotional about and very passionate about and I don't want this channel to ever be a, about outrage or about over emoting I want it to come from a place of logic and uh and, and authenticity um so but but again after what's just happened I have to talk about it so I think I uh I got sucked up into the social media thing pretty hardcore in the early well the 2010s about uh, whenever she was really kicking off I got sucked into it. If you followed me back then, especially on Twitter, I was on social media 24-7. And it was super unhealthy for me. It did not bring out the, wor the, the, the best in me. It frankly brought, brought out all the worst tendencies in me. Uh, I tend to have sort of an addictive personality. I tend to, you know, thrive on, um, I mean, who doesn't thrive on other people's opinions? You know, who doesn't thrive on, who doesn't like being patted on the head? with likes and retweets and all that kind of stuff. And I ate that stuff up with a spoon. And it, it ended up being uh, being very detrimental to me. And for 
detrimental to lots of relationships I have, which is why I pulled out of it. Um, so all of that to say, I think today, how I would like to use this platform today is to just share with you what I think are the lies that we've been sold about social media. Because I do think we have been lied to. I think we've been told that social media was supposed to be this open platform where you get to speak truth to power. And I don't think that's been the case at all. I think it's, that's actually been a, a tremendous lie. That's one of the lies we've been told. That's not what it is. Maybe it started out that way, but it's not where it's going now. So I'm just going to get into this. These are the lies that I believed about social media that brought out the absolute worst in me. And the first one is, it, the first lie is that I am the judge. Now, what does that mean? I had this image in my head. I'll tell you about my, my normal social media habits back in the early 2010s. Every day I go to work about seven o'clock in the morning and I would begin my day with a giant cup of coffee. I sit in front of my computer monitor and you know do some emails, but also I click on Twitter and Facebook. And I would basically just, uh, after the emails were done, I would basically fart around on Twitter and look at the new movie trailers, who's doing what, and I would basically judge everything that was before me. And what, what awoke me, what kind of snapped me out of that was, I'll never forget this, I'm a visual guy. I, I, exp I Obviously, I'm an artist. Uh, so things tend to reveal themselves to me via imagery. And one day, I, as I sat down at my, drawing, at my computer desk with this giant cup of coffee, as always, I, I looked... As I looked at the computer screen, I had this flash of an image in my head, and I saw myself doing the things I usually do, hitting, you know, getting my mouse, getting my coffee, but then I also saw myself putting on a judge's robe with the powdered wig kind of thing, which is a very silly thing, but immediately I got it. I got that the way I was operating and treating social media, I was treating the world as if the world was there for my enjoyment. And that the people on social media were there for me, for my entertainment. It's a really sick way of looking at things. And I realized over time that that's really turned things around for me. Because it made me realize that how I was interacting with the social media world and with people online is I would say things that frankly were really cruel. And I would say them just because I, I honestly probably wasn't looking at those people as if they were real people. I was looking at them as if they were just kind of widgets there for me to enjoy. So that was, that was the beginning of me turning around on social media. And it's what led me to walk away from Twitter completely. And honestly, I did walk away from Facebook for about five years uh, before I went back to it accidentally, which is a whole other story. Uh, so that was the, the first lie. And the, the truth of it, because for every one of these I'll go through, I will speak the lie and I'm going to speak the truth. The lie is that I'm the judge. The truth is I'm just a man. And ultimately, the people online are not there for my enjoyment. They're human beings. They're actually people with families and relationships and interests and dreams just like I do. Um, and there, it's not all about me when I go on social media. And the things I say, you know, I may, I'm, I'm going to say what I think is right. But sometimes there is, there is always discernment that needs to go with everything that I say. And I need to, especially when I'm speaking about other people, if you're going on the internet, regardless of what's happening or what other, someone else has done, you need to think about the fruit of, you, of your words. Because there will always be a consequence in whatever, with whatever word you say. That's just how it is. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. You reap what you sow. And that has to do with your words. And we should know that, especially as creatives. The second lie I believe, actually, I've, I've just started kind of talking about it. I'm, I'm going, I'm tripping over my notes. The second lie I believe is that it's just words. That it's just words. That everything I'm saying, it doesn't matter. Because it's just words. And as a, as a creative, we know better. Especially if you're a writer, you know it's not just words. The truth of the lie is that 
life and death are in the tongue. That you can speak life and you can speak truth to people. You can speak death to people. It's life and death. That's really what it boils down to. And if you don't believe that, you're, delu- you're delusional. You're de- absolutely delusional. You know exactly what you're saying on the internet. And frankly, that is one of the reasons I left Twitter. The last thing I saw before I quit Twitter forever was someone wishing a death, wishing death upon someone else they didn't even know. I don't even remember the context. All I remember was going to Twitter and seeing someone say, hey, you know, I, just go kill yourself or whatever. Like, that's, that's the kind of stuff that is par for the course for Twitter, and we all know that. So the truth of the matter is, it's not just, it's not just words. It actually matters what we say. And our words have very real consequences in this world. And we all know that by now. I'm not talking to children. I'm talking to grown adults. You all know this. We all know this. The third lie is that everything online is my business. And that's not true either. (laughs) You know, I think the greatest lie, the greatest lie, maybe not the greatest lie, but the one I've, I've encountered numerous times you know, let's say something happens. There's, there's, someone gets killed. There's, a, there's a thing. Everyone's talking about it online. And I very seldomly talk about this stuff publicly because I'm a private person and I like focusing on my life and my family and my responsibilities. But it never fails. Every time I'll get an email from someone, a fan, a reader, or something, and they'll ask me, "Hey, Rob, I noticed that you haven't commented on this thing." that everyone else is talking about. Does that mean that you don't care? And I think that is one of the things, one of the lies we've, re- we've really hooked into. We believe that, that we have a duty to comment on everything that's online. Whatever's trending, we all have an obligation, a social obligation, a moral obligation to speak on everything that comes down the wire. And if we don't, we're not a good person. And that's a lie. That is an absolute lie. That that's something we've been we basically been indoctrinated into that I don't I don't agree with. And I don't I don't participate in it. And if you do, that is your business. But I don't operate that way at all. Um, So the lie is everything online is my business. The truth is very little online is my business. My life is my business. My family is my business. My business is my business. But what happens with people on the other side of the planet that I don't know, whatever scandals they're going through, it's not my business. And I don't have to comment on it. So that's... (laughs) I've heard that the definition of boundaries is it's where I begin and where you end. And I think we've lost track of that in this crazy social media climate. And I, I, I think we got to get back. We got we to gotta reestablish where the boundaries are because I think we've lost it. The fourth lie, I think, and I think, again, this ties into what I just said. The fourth lie is that I have a duty to speak because it's expected of me. Other people expect you to speak, even if maybe you don't have anything to say. And you don't, want to be, you don't want to be judged by them, so then you say something that you don't actually even mean, just off the top of your head, because you want to be accepted by the tribe. And I think that's, that's bad. That's not, that's not, that is not good. The truth of that is that I'm not in public relations. I'm, I'm not a corporation. I'm just the creator. And I don't owe anyone explanations besides my family and my, and, and my God. And that's it. I don't owe anyone else explanations. Even if you buy my books, I don't have to explain myself to you. That is not what this relationship is. And we can disagree, but that is where I am on that. And I think we, we really need to get back. We, we need to break free of some of these things that we've learned and been, frankly, I think we've been indoctrinated into, into some things through the last 20 years of social media that are super unhealthy. I grew up in an era before social media. I grew up in the 80s. I didn't have my first cell phone until I was in my 20s. I, I, I know this is just a foreign world to me that I don't really, 
I don't think is, is, I don't think the fruit of it has been good. I think it's been very toxic. And the last lie I have is that I have to do it because everyone else is. And it's kind of a childish lie, but we're all sort of, uh, the thing I've learned the older I've gotten is that every adult is sort of just a grown up child, which is kind of a no brainer thing to say. We all want to be accepted and we all want to be liked. And we participate often in things online that we just, um, we know are wrong because we don't, we just don't want to, we don't, we want we don't want to miss out and we just do what everyone else is doing. So the lie is you, I have to do this because everyone else is. The truth is I participate in this because I choose to. You don't have to participate in this. If you see other people online participating in toxic, insane behavior, you have no obligation professionally or morally to participate in that. You do not. I don't care what anyone tells you on the internet. You have no obligation. If you participate in it, you choose to, and you choose, you choose the consequences that come with your words. If you want to put words out there thoughtlessly, recklessly, it doesn't matter what your intentions are. You can, you can say that you didn't intend your words to go a certain way. But if you threw your words out there recklessly, with no thought, you reap what you sow. I've, I've literally written books on this. So... That's all I have to say, honestly. I, this is a very different video than I ever really intended to make, but I, I'm grieved. I'm, I'm really, really sad about what, I, what I've seen this community start to morph into. And I know it's not, the online community is not the same as the real world community. When I go to conventions, people are amazing. People are awesome in this industry. I love this industry, but what I see the internet, I've seen, I have friends in the industry that I love, that when I see them in person, I love them. When I see them on the line, they're a completely different person. I don't think it's coincidence. There's something about the internet and there's something about social media that takes, that brings something out of us that is completely unhealthy. It, it, it leverages our worst, our worst aspects. So... I always try to be helpful with this channel. So what I'm saying for anyone out there, especially someone who's just starting out, I didn't come up, when I was coming up in the comics, like I said, we were on message boards. We weren't really on, we had MySpace, but social media was not then what it is now. If you're just coming up in this industry, the best thing I could tell you is to use it with wisdom. Use social media wisely. Use it with discernment. Think about the words that you say and think about your motivations of why you're saying what you say. It is not just words. This is not a game. I know that people think social media is a game. It is not a game. It has very real world consequences. And we need to think about this. So that's all I have to say, guys. I hope, <laughs> you know, I hope this doesn't come off as just me being bitter or angry. I'm just frustrated because it's, this could have been avoided. And if, if you were surprised this happened, you have not been paying attention. This has been coming for a long time. So I hope you're well, guys. I hope that um, next week's video is going to be a lot more positive. This is the last time I'm talking about this. Uh, so I hope you have a good week. I'll, I'll catch you next week. Bye.